Surprisingly enough, the scene where a woman eats out her own eyeball isn't the strangest thing about this film. This week we are going back into the depraved mind of director Isayasu Sato, a director that I've learned to really love during the last year, and this year I want to dwell more into his filmography because due to my good friend Urschel from Shock and Schlock, I now have access to over 20 of the man's work. And no, I won't cover the horse ones. Don't even ask. But today I am tackling... I don't know why I had to play act this one, one of his more famous films. I wouldn't say mainstream because it's fucking Isayasu Sato, not John Waters, but you know, it's the more well-known of his little movies. And that is, of course, Splatter Naked Blood. And with a title like that, it must be very gruesome. And yes, it is. There's a woman that eats herself. <laughs> But a fact that not a lot of people probably know is that this film is a remake of one of Sato's earlier films, and that film was Pleasure Kill, which I've already covered on my channel, and you should watch that review because the movie is the exact same without the sex. Of course, there is sex in this film, I mean, we're talking about Sato. However, Pleasure Kill was a pinku film, and this is more of a straight horror film. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't taking sex away from a Sato film kind of the equivalent to taking away, you know, showing kids' feet in a Dan Schneider production? And first of all, that's a weird comparison. But yeah, it feels kind of strange not to have copious amounts of explicit sex in this film. Now, I'm not saying that because I'm some kind of pervert who always needs to see tits, asses, and, uh, and dicks to be happy. I'm saying that because Sato's actually genius in his use of human sexuality. He uses it to build his characters and uh, the world around them. Which, this film is a perfect example for that. If you compare it to Pleasure Kill, the characters kind of just feel empty. What is this movie about? Well, well, it's the exact same thing as Pleasure Kill. We follow this young, brilliant-minded scientist who creates something that essentially is supposed to be a painkiller. He wants this to be the best painkiller and he wants it to make people happy. However, he's 17. He's bound to make some mistakes. But he will use the fact that his mom is another brilliant scientist to sneak in his magic potion into a test lab. So the mother was trying to test this new drug that would prevent pregnancy. There is a word for that. I've kind of forgotten it right now, but trust me, there is one. And his mother is scheduled to do some clinical testings on three girls. However, it doesn't turn out how the mother was expecting it because the little boy sneaks into the operation or test room and there he does a little classic switcheroo and he tests out his drug on his mother's patients. And during that time, he's gonna film from the window. And that's a common theme in this film. Our little boy is kind of a pervert and he really likes to film the women that are being experimented on. So the mother doesn't notice, the tests go well and the girls are let go. And then they go out to eat, talk about their character traits, which is basically one of them superficial, one of them really likes to eat, and our main girl that we'll spend the most time on, well, you see she doesn't sleep. And to remedy that fact, the only thing she has in her apartment is this kind of sci-fi chair that lets her see her dreams and a cactus. You know, women will judge us for, you know, just having a couch, a TV, and a PS4, but they'll be completely fine just having a chair and a cactus in their living room. Not sure if that's common with women. I don't see a lot of those. <laughs> so our little boy goes on and, you know, keeps filming the girl with the cactus, who we'll just call Cactus Girl from now on, and she sees that he does that and kind of gives him shit for being a creep, which is fair. And then he tries to explain her that, you know, he works for his mom and he's following the subjects, blah, 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 blah. And then they tell each other that they hate themselves and they go on a date. 
because that's what you do with somebody you, you hate. And on their date, the plan is to go somewhere she hates. And that's a field of flowers because you see, flowers talk to her and they're quite loud and obnoxious. She's a weird one. During that time, we get the backstory, you know, the boy's father was this brilliant mind, but he wasn't respected, blah 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 blah, this part of the movie kinda sucks, it just feels like padding, and it's uninteresting. Pleasure Kill had a way better way of showing character development, because the weird girl and the science boy in that film actually built a relationship, a very weird one, but an actual interesting one. This film, it's Oh, I have daddy issues and my mama filmed my dad and then my mama is watching old films of dad at the beach and it doesn't really explain anything about my character other than he was a brilliant scientist and holy shit, those scenes are tedious and boring as fuck. And they make out a majority of the second act. Now eventually we get to why we're watching this movie and that's for, you know, blood. And our girl who's superficial, well, she's looking at herself in the mirror, of course, and then she puts a needle in her ear and realizes, oh shit, this is actually pleasureful. So she fucking stabs her entire body. Logical conclusion. Same thing with the, the girl that likes to eat. Well, you see, she's doing tempura, she cuts herself and she's like, oh shit, this feels good. So she deep fries her hand and then starts nibbling on her deep fried finger. Cause it's finger licking good. Boo that joke sucked. <laughs> and eventually that leads to the actually most well known part of the film. She takes out a fork, stabs out her eye and eats her eyeball. Which is honestly pretty good and also pretty gross. Kudos to you, Sato. Now you're probably wondering, how do they get pleasure from pain? Well, you see, they explain it to us. The little boy made a painkiller, right? Well, that painkiller releases a lot more endorphin whenever somebody hurts themselves. However, it releases too much endorphin, so basically people who hurt themselves get sexual gratification from it, so they keep doing it. And then after those tremendous scenes of gore, we get more of the girl and the boy sitting in the chair looking at their own dreams. And then we find out that Cactus Lady is completely fucking nuts, which is surprising. And that she murdered all of her friends, and the boy's mother, and eventually, the boy himself. And then the end. So, what did I think of Splatter Naked Blood? Well, I skipped a lot of the uh, uh, useless details of the film because holy shit does this movie have a lot of padding. And if you're thinking, well, Pleasure Kill seemed to have a lot of padding too, well, yes it did. Just in that movie, the padding felt less like padding and more like characters being characters and, you know, you getting to know them. Now I know that I've sounded pretty negative throughout this review. I'm sorry, I'm French-Canadian and I need to be snarky. But honestly, I really like this film. And the ending, I'm not gonna spoil what it is exactly, because holy shit, that came out of nowhere and I really enjoyed that. Let's just say that it might take inspiration from the weird and good scenes from violent shit. So yeah, there was weird aspects to this film that I really liked. I like when Sato goes experimental. I feel like a lot of his film do, but you know, this one, especially the ending, voila. I just feel like personally, and I hate to be that guy, the original was miles better. And it's good that this movie introduced a lot of people to Sato's films, because Sato is an amazing director who needs to be more well known, especially in even the underground scene. However, I feel like this one is the one that gets you into Sato, and then you eventually graduate to his more obscure and better films. Anyway, this was spooky, and I am out See you next week. Mm -hmm.